Tony Hawk is the most popular skateboarder of all time. There's a meme that Nike Shoe sponsors pretty much every single good skateboarder because, well, they can. They have a footing in every single sport so far, so of course, inevitably, they would be in skateboarding. It was important for them to tap into urban street culture because they pretty much had every other demographic already. So why the hell would they not have the most popular skateboarder of all time on their roster? You know, uh, the first thought maybe is like, oh, Tony Hawk. Why wouldn't he go skate for Nike, Nike or yeah. Adidas or mm -hmm. some of these bigger companies? Or you have know, his own like, shoe company. Or he goes on to say that a big company bought out Hawk clothing, which was also paired with Hawk shoes. And as soon as they bought it, they just ended Hawk shoes. And amazingly enough, he said he was just wearing his son's pro shoe, Riley Hawk for Lakai Footwear, one of my favorite shoe brands. It's not that I wasn't interested. I definitely would be interested in, you know, Vans, like, I started on Vans. Yeah. He also goes into talking about Vans, where he almost had a partnership, which I actually got a brand new pair of shoes and a new skateboard that I have to test out. Probably not the best idea to get used to shoes and a board on the windiest day on earth. The topic of this video goes far beyond just the Tony Hawk conversation. Just thought it was a good title, but it's more about people who gain popularity without brands. How do they end up partnering with brands? The part that inspired me to make this video is when he said this. It was either that they had their program with whoever it was, or they wanted too much from me and my time. I've always just assumed it had to do with what he's already had and what he really doesn't need from a sponsor. And it was like, I want to have skate sponsors, yes. you know, Bones, yes. Indie, Birdhouse, Lakai. Which a lot of it does, and I love that so much. He was saying that Adidas and Nike aren't skate sponsors, which they're not. They're giant corporations that had enough money to steer every skater away from their original shoe sponsor. Which still isn't a lot of money. After hearing Shane O'Neill's interview on the same podcast, when he was one of the stars of Nike, he still wasn't making much money from them. And why do skate companies pay so little? I don't even think I need to go into it, but one, they don't make a lot of money, and two, because they can. Skateboarders are going to use their products regardless of how much money they're making from the products. And if you think about how much it costs to go through boards and shoes every month, if I was skating intensely like I am in this day and age, I would go through two pairs of shoes and four boards a month. It's like $400. So there's no reason for Tony Hawk to say no to riding for the same company his son does, where it requires basically no work on his side, and he gets to contribute a little bit of creativity for his shoes. <laughs> yelling in the background. So those few tricks took me about an hour because I couldn't find a good skate spot and I'm just over it. And this whole conversation bleeds into the culture of skateboarding that is today. So much different from what it was 20 years ago. Nowadays, the most popular skate outlets aren't through companies. They're just self-made like Braille Skateboarding or Andy Schrock. These are individuals who took matters into their own hand and basically built empires around their scene. At the end of the day, most skateboarders who support skateboarding financially, they like the kind of skaters that have big personalities. All the people who are super, super good at the top kind of all look the same at a certain point for people who aren't super good at skateboarding. And there is a hurtful truth to all this to where if you do need to go through a gatekeeper of some sort to allow you 
to be sponsored or to give you product, there will always be biases. And maybe you're the kind of person who is so lovable and everybody likes you. And no matter how good you are at skateboarding, people are gonna welcome you in with open arms. But a lot of you, and me included growing up, were not the kind of people that people welcomed at all. No matter how good I felt like I was getting or how good a lot of my friends got, companies just didn't think that they were the right fit for their brand in terms of marketing. And nowadays the beauty is in these phones. You have a media company at your fingertips and you can contact people from all over the world with whatever you wanna create. And I wanna thank you for tuning in today. I wanna to recommend my podcast, which my brother and I have been having an insane amount of fun working on. Every week we upload a new podcast. You can check out the links for Apple iTunes, Spotify, and the YouTube channel because we film it as well. And there are clips that I post on the same channel two or three times a week in case the videos are too long for you. But I 100% recommend it if you are into anime and all the good. Human beings, I love you so much. Progress daily and keep killing it! Skateboarding. I was about to, but then I literally just saw the sign. No <laughs> I didn't even see that beforehand. That's all right. Yep, sorry about that. Yeah, no Appreciate you.